So this is the clip that's going around that has everyone surprised. GPT-6 might be being released early. The products that they're rolling out are extraordinarily good. Soar 2, for example. Right. And we're going to have, um, I know Brad Gerstner's coming on in a little bit. I was just chatting with him. I mean, uh, ChatGPT-6 is coming out before the end of the year. And I just think we're going to see these step function improvements in the product. If you do that and you're in, t and you're in the open AI ecosystem, you're okay in terms of vendor finance. So this information was, you know, coming from Senior Managing Director Mark Mahaney. And he stated on CNBC that OpenAI plans to release GPT-6 before the end of 2025. And he was actually citing a conversation with OpenAI investor Brad Gerstner. And this prediction actually follows the GPT-5 2025 debut, which some people believe wasn't actually that good. And, you know, the main thing to point out is that, of course, OpenAI haven't actually said this, but I've seen numerous sources online stating that OpenAI do actually plan to release, you know, GPT-6 earlier than we had initially anticipated. So if they do release this in you know 2025 like you know in like december or something that would be really really crazy but i wouldn't blame them because there were so many different things wrong with the model when it was released like i remember when gpt5 was released you know a lot of people complained about the model switcher even now i, I still think it's pretty terrible but basically you know people are now speculating what will gp6 be so i'm gonna you know include a you know, it's the number of sources on different things that there will be. So one of the things that, you know, is an obvious question. And in my previous video, I spoke about AGI. And some people are saying that if GPT-6 builds on the IMO gold model and they've had time to improve it, the average Joe could have a chat GPT that wins a gold medal at an international mathematical Olympiad. And if this becomes the new default and everything else is improved too, well, honestly, that could be it. So this is someone who's been in the AI community for quite some time. Then basically saying they wouldn't completely rule out that OpenAI announces AGI this year. And that information isn't just purely speculative. It's based on all of the things that have happened in the past, you know, eight to 12 months. That includes this post from earlier this year, where at the start, you know, I think it was either at the start or at the end of 2024 or at the start of 2025, OpenAI did say that we are now confident we know how to build AGI as we have traditionally understood it. And they said that we believe that in 2025, we may see the first AI agents join the workforce and materially change the output of companies. And, you know, they said that, you know, they already know how to build AGI. So when we think about how crazy that is, is of course pretty insane if you think about the actual implications of, you know, said AGI. But I do think it's crazy because a company saying that, look, we're now changing our aim to super intelligence in the true sense of the word. It kind of gives you that kind of, I guess you could say, and essentially what I'm stating here is that the company is giving us a sense of where they are in terms of their models. And I know most people do believe that like OpenAI is just, you know, not achieved AGI. There's of course been some interviews where certain researchers are claiming that LLMs aren't smart. They don't know what they're talking about. LLMs are an off ramp. We're completely confused, but I have to argue that the AI community is distinctively split on where we're headed anyways, because I'm seeing posts daily from extremely intelligent people who are basically saying that GPT-5 in its current form, the extended thinking mode is allowing for, you know, literally doing what OpenAI said they were doing. So I'm going to highlight this bit, you know, super intelligent tools could, you know, massively accelerate scientific discovery and innovation well beyond what we are capable of doing on our own. And I've seen that happen a few times this year. I don't have the examples right now. I might actually go and find them on Twitter, but it isn't surprising that, you know, this has occurred because they did state that they're looking at super intelligent AI. And I think one of the most fundamental disconnects is because as average users, as people who use ChatGPT, I guess you could say in the middle spectrum, like we're not, you know, curing cancer or, you know, doing PhDs type work on a day-to-day -day basis. But those people who are, I'm seeing an increasing number of posts where they're talking about, you know, the amount that they're now actually receiving from the model. So it's quite likely that most people are disconnected from the actual pace of intelligence of these models. For example, I came across this post here. It says GPT-5 Pro rediscovered novel astrophysics results in under 30 minutes. Alex Lupasaska, an astrophysicist, gave it a real research problem he'd been working on. It independently derived the same solution. You've officially crossed the line from AI summarizing science to AI doing science. This isn't hype. This is the first confirmed 
LLM, producing a new discovery from scratch. Humanity just built a collaborator that can generate knowledge. Singularity won't announce itself with fireworks. It'll show up quietly in a ChatGPT share link. So this is pretty crazy because like I said, this isn't the first time I've I've had this happen. This literally isn't the first time. Um, and of course he said it's not flawless, but that is pretty crazy when you actually think about it. So the claim that GPT-6 might be AGI isn't as far-fetched as people think. Now, of course, if you want to talk about an AGI that's going to have memory, continual learning, all of those things, of course, that's another conversation. But super intelligent AI that can make discoveries accelerate, you know, uh, this kind of development, I would argue that it's very, very close, closer than we think. Now, if we get into more dubious speculation about what GPT-6 might be, and I say this is completely dubious speculation because this is from the official trademark. And this is actually from a year ago when I actually found this. And there were only a few things that stood out from you know the prior trademark. So one of the things that stood out was music generation, which I highlighted. So music generation, of course, is pretty much solved because OpenAI had Jukebox, I think it was 2023, and it was really good. Like if you know what Suno is, music generation was pretty much solved. So maybe they're going to do this. I personally don't think they would do this. I think they might just do this for the fun of it because it's quite likely that they already have music generation inbuilt into Sora, but I don't think OpenAI sees any kind of user demand. I don't really see the demand for it. They might just release it as a standalone product, you know, or something just in the model, you know, where they can just have that. But of course, one of the biggest things we did see is for the purpose of testing artificial intelligence agents. So this is something that I, of course, found, and it's probably, you know, that they're going to be building even better autonomous agents because most people, once again, don't realize that GPT, you know, five and newer models that I'm continuously seeing, the length that models can autonomously work for is continuously increasing. Where it used to be like, you know, a few hours. Now it's, I think, 30 hours, and that's completely uninterrupted on task. Now, if you want some more recent information, I did make a video on this completely, but GPT-6, one of the main, main features is going to be memory. This is one of the features that people really do really, really, really want. And he said, you know, he's basically just appealing to what users genuinely want. He said he wants a future chat GPT versions to let users define the tone and personality. And Altman called enhanced memory his favorite feature this year. And he wants people, people basically want features where the AI is able to understand them. So I'm guessing that GPT-6, there's probably going to be an even better memory feature, maybe I don't know if there's going to be continual learning. I think that will be like in a completely different thing, but it will be interesting to see how this is implemented into the model. Now, of course, there might be adult mode. I spoke about this in the previous video, but I'm guessing that GPT-6, maybe they're going to allow this with some kind of age verification because, of course, you don't want minors just, you know, stumbling across this kind of thing. And I'm guessing that's going to be there because he says in December, as we roll out age gating more fully and as part of our treat adult users like adults, we'll roll out, you know, even more like, you know, adult mode for verified adults. So it's quite likely that December could be the time of release. So, you know, maybe they're going to bundle that release together. I'm not sure, but I do know that it's not easy to be able to train models. But I did actually find there was some article that was like, you know, you can, um, there's a new data center where they're able to train models in like, you know, a lot less time. So that might be why that there is such of, uh, you know, I guess you could say speed up in the amount of models that we're getting. Now, what else can we expect from GPT-6? Well, of course, you know, you won't, you won't expect long context windows because Sam Altman already basically said there's low user demand. Um, and I'll actually include some of the information I spoke about in a previous video on GPT-6 because there is actually a, a video that I made that covers a few of the points. But it was super interesting because Sam Altman here does talk about the fact that like, you know, GPT-6 is going to be a real thing. But they talk about what if GPT-6 can discover new science. Now, before you do say that, whoa, 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 GPT-6 is, you know, never going to discover new science, it can barely respond. And now we have to remember that there are three iterations of GPT-5 and the version of GPT-5 high, the highest reasoning version is actually up there. Like, I know it doesn't feel like it right now because of how the model switcher is and your general perception is that the model's not that good. But based on what I've seen and based on the different AIs out there, it's super interesting to see how they're starting to embed these AIs into different architectures. I mean, possibly you'll be asking me like, what does it mean if this thing can go discover new science? Hmm. Yeah. Like, what, how, how, how is the world supposed to think about GPT-6 discovering new science? Now, maybe not, like maybe we don't deliver that, but 
It feels within grasp. If you did, what would you say? What would, your, what would the implications of that kind of achievement be? Imagine you do succeed. Yeah, I mean, I think the great parts will be great, the bad parts will be scary, and the bizarre parts will be like, bizarre on the first day and then we'll get used to them really fast and so now that you've seen all of those points are you guys excited for gpt6 could it be agi could you know gpt6 really come before the end of the year i think it certainly can and um you know if you've enjoyed this video let me know what would be your most anticipated feature what you think it could be i think it would probably be for me a more autonomous agent but i don't know if the average person genuinely wants that i think it probably might be a more enterprise feature if anything so with that being said if you enjoyed this video I'll see you in the next one.